A Canadian search plane is giving new urgency to the search for that submersible lost in the Atlantic hundreds of kilometers off St. John's. It's been listening for sounds and it has detected some in a major development breaking overnight. This is the first image into us from the U.S. Coast Guard showing the search effort. It's from a news release early this morning detailing the development. The Coast Guard says a Canadian P-3 Aurora aircraft detected, quote, underwater sounds during yesterday's search. Now, these are the last images of the Titan submersible, and as we look at them, we can tell you that U.S. media outlets describe those sounds as banging. But the Coast Guard says follow-up underwater searches have not turned up anything yet. It's now estimated the five people on board Titan only have enough air to last until tomorrow morning. And a key focus now is bringing in more ships with underwater search equipment. Getting salvage equipment on scene is a top priority. Uh, Unified Command is working through that to prioritize uh, what equipment um, we can get there. There are ongoing operations right now uh, via the U.S. Navy and Transcom to get, to get equipment uh, staged in St. John's and to get it on scene. That scene is about 700 kilometers southeast of St. John's. Equipment like this could be vital to recovering the submersible if it's located. That device is an underwater robot capable of working at a depth of 6,000 meters. It's on board the French research ship La Talente that is heading for that search area, and it could be there by this evening. The U.S. Navy is also preparing a ship with a deep water recovery capability. That ship carries this device, the Curve 21, and it too can dive to 6,000 meters. It could potentially recover a small vessel like the Titan using its gripping arms. That ship, however, is still at least another day away. So time, not a friend of this ongoing search effort. Looking live at St. John's, which is the staging area for these ships preparing to join the search, let's bring in Mark Quinn back with us to start the hour on what is, Mark, the third morning of the search. What new information do we have about where things stand right now with the clock ticking on that air supply? Yes, Heather. Well, we've seen a, a Facebook post by a group called uh, the Explorers Club. Uh, it's a club that uh, Hamish Harding, one of the people on the uh, Titan, is a member of. And they're saying that uh, they're making a, a UK-based uh, ROV that can dive to 6,000 meters available to searchers. So perhaps another resource for searchers. In their statement, they're also taking great hope from uh, the, the news that there's been banging. Of course, uh, the U.S. Coast Guard did confirm that on Twitter, that they heard that, and they suggested that they've moved some ROV resources to look for an underwater, uh, underwater, uh, find the Titan underwater with those ROVs. Um, and the Explorers Club members say they're taking great hope from that. And uh, they also say that um, this practice of banging on uh, the side of a vessel is a common practice in a, in a rescue of a submarine. So uh, that brings great hope to people who hope that uh, there are survivors still in, this, uh, in the Titan, in the vessel underwater. Um, Yesterday here in St. John's, a C-17, a U.S. military aircraft arrived and it was bringing uh, equipment for the search. Uh, the RCMP actually escorted uh, that equipment back down to the harbor here in St. John's where it was loaded on vessels. It was loaded on the Horizon Arctic, which is a, a commercial offshore marine supply vessel. That vessel left shortly after midnight. So those are some of the resources that are going from the staging area here, area here in St. John's. Um, of course, uh, one of the issues that's being raised on social media and reports is uh, people are starting to raise questions about the quality assurance that was done by Ocean Gate Expeditions. Uh, there was a letter uh, published in the New York Times uh, which suggested uh, some experts, some submarine experts, were questioning that as far back as 2018, Heather. Legal action from a former employee on the inside and yes, questions from experts outside the company itself, but this is really starting to bubble up. Some of these concerns about structural integrity and design and differences and a lack of certification for this particular submersible mark. Is this something that search and rescue officials have addressed? They've been pretty clear that right now their focus is on this search and trying to find the Titan, to find out where it is, to locate it, and then uh, find out a way to actually retrieve it if it's underwater uh, or if it's above water, which would be the best case scenario, to get those people out and get them to safety. So that's been their focus. Uh, they're not talking about the, this other issue right now. Um, of course, the, the real challenge here is time. And uh, by the estimates that we heard yesterday, uh, there's uh, about 24 hours left of oxygen 
in that vessel. Um, if those people are still alive, they have perhaps until tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. Heather? That is an incredible deadline ahead as we bring you hour by hour updates. Mark Quinn, thank you in St. John's, the staging area and the uh, setting for our lead coverage this morning. Some expert insight now on the breaking development in the search, those underwater sounds that the Canadian surveillance plane picked up. Frank Owen is a retired submarine commander in the Royal Australian Navy. He joined us last hour, gave us really extensive understanding of what's going on. He believes the sounds are in fact coming from the lost Titan submersible. My level of optimism has, has gone up by an order of magnitude since I heard uh, that these sounds were being detected at 30 minute intervals. Because firstly, it meant, meant that the, um, there was somebody alive and they were thinking about the way submariners would um, alert the searching forces to their, um, the fact they were alive. And secondly, it's more likely that uh, the uh, sound is going to be captured by a sonoboy that is in the same water column as the, uh, the source of the noise. And if that's the case, um, it's then a matter of localizing it and locating it so that the normal risk uh, recovery system can uh, get, come into force.